I am uh, the Field Museum's Chief Curiosity Correspondent. This is my job title. I think I'm the only one in the world, but that's okay, I'm trying to change that. I grew up in South Dakota, and there aren't a lot of natural history museums there. There's a small geological collection and museum on the university campus, but for the most part, I had no idea what the function of museums was. I didn't, I just thought they were places with cool exhibits, and then they had some dinosaurs, expensive looking gems, and taxidermy. When I started working or volunteering in the museum in Montana, I realized that these are research collections, and they help us understand the entirety of the history of all life on Earth. And they help record and relate past cultures of peoples. And to me, that just opened up a wealth of knowledge and information. After starting the Brain Scoop with Hank Green back in Montana, at the University of Montana, and I'd been working on the show for a couple of months before a viewer of the Brain Scoop had seen it, and she was a longtime member of the Field Museum, and offered to sponsor me and Michael Aranda to come to the field and uh, witness or participate in this behind the scenes uh, series of events that they did for one week. And so I called the field and I said, could, you know, I'm a small time YouTuber. Can I come and film this behind the scenes thing? I love natural history and I'd love to visit your collection. And they were really excited to have us, which was pretty surprising because I didn't think anybody watched our show. So I really have to credit our current president, Richard LaRiviere of the Field Museum because he saw the brain scoop and he saw the potential of it. He just helped make the collections and the research staff available to me. And uh, I started working with the, the research staff and the scientists here to learn more about what they were working on and what their priorities were and uh, offering up the brain scoop as a, a gateway for them to reach the public and to interact with the public. There is a sense of wanting to make this material accessible to the public, but there's also like unavoidable logistical challenges, right? You can't hope to bring every visitor, 1.5 million people last year from the Field Museum into the area behind the scenes in the collections. One, we don't have the staff to help manage that. And two, a lot of these specimens and artifacts, they don't, they're not what you would Im imagine looking at a museum artifact. A lot of them are like pickled fish in jars or like tiny insects on pins. We have so many things. I mean, 30 million things is an inconceivable number of objects and artifacts. We have one of the largest collections of meteorites outside of NASA. I know that our biggest collection are the insect collection because they're the most numerous organisms on the planet. With the Brain Scoop, we help to talk about what sort of research is happening with those things and then also uh, engage the public in a digital way because we can get more information out if we put it online than we could if we try to bring everybody conceivably behind the scenes. The Field Museum was born from the end of the 1893 World's Fair, which was the World's Columbian Exhibition. They had geological specimen, dinosaurs, and taxidermy on display because you have to remember at that time motion picture cameras were not in the popular uh, market and so if you wanted to know what a zebra looked like you had to have a taxidermy zebra but when that fair shut down a lot of these people didn't want to ship all that stuff back to where they came from and so uh, the founders of the Field Museum saw an opportunity to raise a bunch of money and uh, Marshall Field put down a lot of money to uh, found this institution and to bring all those collections in, in one place. When they were amassing all of these things and opening up this collection, they could not conceivably predict the sort of innovations and inventions and discoveries that would come out of this museum. So when I think about like what it would take to start a natural history museum today, it's just conceivably impossible. There's no way that you could get enough funding to be like, I want you, like imagine a startup where you're like, I want representations of all life on earth that have ever existed. Give me some money. Like that, that would never happen today. People would wanna know what you're gonna do with it and what could happen. Um, so museums as legacy institutions have a benefit where we have a track record of over a century of things that have been learned from uh, our collections. And it's everything from the miracle of flight uh, and, and advances in, in aeronautics to medical breakthroughs. And it's just unfortunate that in today's days where everybody has a cell phone and everybody has seemingly infinite access to knowledge that museum collections are somehow removed from those points of discovery, which is kind of where the brain scoop comes in, in my ideal world, um, that we can help bridge that gap and help people understand that museums are amazing places and we know most everything about our planet because of them. The fun thing about the Brain Scoop is that we've been creating it for four years now. That's a good amount of time to see some change. When we celebrated our like four year anniversary a few weeks ago, 
um, some people started reaching out to say, you know, I started watching this when I was uh, a freshman in college and it really helped me identify what I wanted to do. So thanks for these videos. Or people who said I was in a different field of study and I decided I wanted to do science and your videos helped with that. Um, that kind of feedback is the best kind of feedback when you've put so much effort into a show and uh, just wanted people to enjoy it. You know, that's kind of been the bottom line. You want people to learn something and you want them to have a new appreciation for what it is you're talking about. But to hear that it's changed people's lives and helped people, you know, focus on something and, and empowered people to make changes or to pursue things that they wouldn't have thought about before is one, inconceivable, and like two, just humbling and uh, really gratifying. Um, I also get lots of really cute hand-drawn pictures from kids. I think Chicago greatly benefits from the field being here, not just because of access to collections, but because we have researchers who are working with our local communities, but then with communities all over the world. And so that brings a certain scientific and cultural richness to the Midwest, which is normally kind of locked up on either coast. Uh, so I think we can provide that sort of basis for we are a place of science, we are a, a place of authority uh, in terms of like research authority. Um, and if you have questions about things that are happening uh, for science policy or in the news, you can find expertise here. And we're not a federal institution, we're a private institution. So uh, we're shielded from a lot of the pressures that might be put on scientists who work for government right now. Um, so you can know that uh, you can find an answer to a question you might have about policy or climate change or women in science or any of these other things that are happening. We're really trying to be more nimble and to be more responsive for people in our community. Since our museum is in the park district, we're required to give a number of free days for Illinois residents every year. So we decided to make it free February. And it's actually been a huge boost for us in terms of attendance and bringing in uh, people who wouldn't normally have the museum on their radar. So that's been really cool to see that happening. And we tend to get people from communities who uh, otherwise probably couldn't make it to the Field Museum. The cultural diversity that you experience living here is just tremendous. Um, there are people that are from countries I had never heard of before. And what is like sheltered life to go from not knowing that there's a world of possibility out there to moving here and just having that world open up. Chicago has done that in amazing ways. And uh, so I, you know, yeah, I could, I'd call it home.